graffiti was a really, really big issue. I remember going to Mayor Murphy and, and saying to him about my concerns, um, and, and I saw this happening. I thought, you know, Mayor Murphy, this is not good. Um, so he assigned me to chair the graffiti task force, and that was my first charge in city government here, and I worked on that for about a year or so, and we made recommendations to the city that um, about how to end uh, graffiti. Uh, a couple quick questions. Uh, you feeling good about the economy of, of Pittsburgh, uh, in particular, southwestern Pennsylvania in general, and uh, it, and and if so, why? I mean, it just it, it can always be better, but but. Every study shows that the economic climate in Pittsburgh here is is pretty sound. Uh, what did we win again now? The the number one city again. I forget under whose criteria. You know, good quality of life, uh, yeah. low property val or low property prices, right, high property right. values. Not low, yeah, not low property yeah. values, but, yeah. but low prices. Yeah, but but the, the problem that we face, like any aging city, is one of population and encouraging people to live in the city. That's what generates the tax base, which generates the, the pot of money in which we can deliver your services. And no one is going to choose to live in an environment if it's not safe and welcoming and, and uh, diversified and with healthy business districts and, and all of those things, adequate police protection and fire and good roads and, and all of that. So I try to focus on those things as being revenue generators. And when you talk about the environment, uh, there's, there's environment little e and environment big e, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about about environment, Big E, specifically um, Marcella Shell, gas drilling, and some of these these issues that directly impinge upon the quality of life in Pittsburgh. Quality of life, obviously, is something you're very much interested in. Um, you're part of a, of, of a block of folks on, on, on city council that were particularly concerned about um, the drilling and, and, and limiting um, drilling uh, in the city proper. Um, but as you know, there's a lot of pressure building um, all around across the state. To, to you know, the governor uh, rescinded the temporary, repealed um, the, um, um, the 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 the, the, um, the law that that uh, limited um, you know drilling. Parks. Yeah, and, and that's going to be uh, a, a matter of concern for for millions mm -hmm. of people in this state. And and we have you know, what do you well? Once the cat's out of the bag, it's pretty hard to put it back in. Um, and so I, my, my philosophy is all about proactive management on the front end so we're not cleaning it up on the back end or finding ways to spend public safety dollars to enforce something that if we just had good policy in place to begin with and we educated people into compliance instead of punishing them through enforcement, we'd all be better off. Um, and so in terms of Marcella Shale, we thought very much along those lines. Lots of controversy around it. Um, lots of people wanting to come in um, and um, and drill the land. Uh, not a lot of research. No excise tax that, right. that benefits the state. All of those things. Um, uh, we had people come into the council chamber to testify at public comment. Um, about how when they turn their water on in their kitchen and they light a match to it, it lights. That's scary stuff. Something's up. So, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. At the very least, we're not going to go and, and drill and then realize, oh, my God, we made a horrible mistake. How do we get the genie back in the bottle? We voted to just, and this was a lengthy discussion, months and months and months, we decided we're going to ban drilling in the city limits of Pittsburgh until we understand whether or not this is safe, um, whether or not um, you know, it, it's going to generate revenue for people or just take money out of the state and all kinds of different things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what we decided to do. And uh, we met a little bit of resistance, but I believe the vote was unanimous Actually, when we were done. Actually, it was unanimous. I, I should correct the record on that. Um, but it's always interesting, the tension between those who, who say, hey, we should have more of a laissez-faire attitude when it comes to anything that generates, um, you know, money and jobs um, for people, because that's, quite frankly, been Pittsburgh's philosophy. I mean, we, we put up with decades and decades of, of unbreathable air and undrinkable water, uh, but we had, we had, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs, and the city was, was flush with cash. Yeah. And, uh, but look and, at the leadership. Mm -hmm. like David Lawrence, that stepped up to say, we can do better than this smoky image. 
And, and he, he, through the first and second renaissance, we transformed Pittsburgh to a, an international city that's viewed by the world as, as being the model for how to be you know, a clean and environmentally friendly city. Why in God's name would we want to go back? And roll back all of those years of, of success. Is the mayor on board with this? That was, or was he passively on board with this? I, I, I don't really know. No, he was not. <laughs> hmm. There's something to be said. There's something to be said for both spectrums. There's something to be said for youth and all of the, you know, the energy and vitality and innocence and, and, um, um, that it brings. And there's something to be said for life experience. Um, and for having been around the block once or twice and seen it done, it been there. Um, and, um, and they're both good qualities to have. Um, but I'm on the other side of that. I'm, I'm on the side of seeing it done, it been there. I'm 57, be 57 in April. Um, and so w- when, when I look at something, I look at it more in terms of legacy. And what am I leaving behind that I want to be remembered for something? Um, and and at, at my age, I'm not looking to spin a political career. I am not looking to say, oh, I should vote on this because down the road I'm going to do this and I'm going to vote on this. I look at everything for the merit of it. Is this good to do? Is this bad to do? And that's what I've cast my vote on. And I'm fearless that way. I truly believe there's nothing anyone can do to harm or damage me. Uh, My life is my life. Uh, You know, there's nothing that I have of such importance that anyone could take away from me or manipulate me into doing something that I don't truly believe is in the best interest of the people. Um, we have reinvented our, our industry here in Pittsburgh. Uh, when once was the steel industry and in, in, in the collapse of the 70s, Pittsburgh has reinvented itself as an Eds and Meds center. So that's what we do now. We manufacture steel at one time. We now manufacture educators and doctors. And what that is, that resurgence in industry has been amazing in the transformation of the city and what it's brought us. But at the same time, it's also limited our tax base. University spread, taxes come off the, the um, property tax comes off the rolls, there's less money coming in, we can't deliver the services we used to, and you're this downward spiral. Um, uh, so what do we do about that? What we can do about that? On a local level, our hands are completely tied in the issue. The laws were written back in 1864 or 5 mm-hmm. that basically exempt nonprofits of churches and hospitals and schools from paying property tax. In 1865, that was a very sensible decision. Who wants to tax the, you know, the, the mother, you know, house. But today, um, when you have UPMC um, with a, what they don't call profit, they call excess revenue of $465 million a right. year and it's are not paying, and not paying property non-profit. tax, something's not right with this. And, and I would go so far as to say even churches should be taxed well, and, and houses of worship and, and, and you know. But, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Uh, but, <laughs> what's on my side? To lose sight of the big picture here. It is that. It's not so much the entity in and of itself. It's the principle of how do we change the law? That law no longer serves us. Um, And that's what needs to be changed, um, is that um, state legislators have got to, we have got to put state legislators in place that have the guts and the political will to make those kinds of decisions. But very, very solid, honest, reputable state legislators are being removed from office over social issues like guns. Right. I had the honor of meeting Dave Levdansky because of um, situations in my council district alone. 35% of all shootings in Allegheny County take place in hilltop neighborhoods that I represent, Allentown, Belts, Hoover, Knoxville. I cannot, as a representative of those neighborhoods, um, let that go unchecked and just say, oh, well, I guess that's what that's about. Mm -hmm. So this council took a very proactive stand. We passed lost and stolen handgun legislation to stop the the, um, uh, purchasing of straw purchase. What that means is the way guns are getting on the street, I go into a gun show. I I have a clean record. I've never had a violation. I buy 20 guns, which is my legal right to do. I take them into a neighborhood like Beltsover. I sell them on the street. Those guns are used in the commission of a crime. It's traced back to me, and I go, man, you know what? And I had that Glock the other day. 
But she, I don't know, must have gotten lost or stolen. Right. And they repeat it and repeat right. it and repeat it. And there are no repeated. sanctions against you as the there, person. There are none. There are now in Pittsburgh, although the mayor is not supportive, did not sign right. the legislation right. and will not enforce the legislation. But we put a lost and stolen requirement into law here in mm -hmm. Pitt Pittsburgh that says if you lose, if upon discovery, Mm -hmm. of, of a loss or theft of a weapon that you own, you have 48 hours to report that. And if that gun, and only if that gun is found to be used in the commission of a crime, you will pay, face a penalty of, I think it's $1,500. So, so I, I say that to say the power of the vote is as important as it has ever, ever been. Until or unless we change state legislators, to be responsible advocates for the people. This is the nonsense we're going to own. UPMC is going to have $465 million of excess revenue and not pay their fair share to support infrastructure um, in the city. And legislators are going to be voted out on social issues and not on, you know, and treasured for their position on economic issues. Somebody else. There's so many people have questions.